Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're new here, I'm Tash and this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week and I also put out regular tutorials. So it's Wednesday the 25th of September and I'm recording in Sydney, Australia. So I have a couple of finished objects this week, uh, one that I am wearing and um, just a couple of really little tiny ones that I'll show after, but this is kind of the star of the show. Um, this is Jupiter Crop by Caitlin Hunter. I knit it out of the recommended yarn, even in the recommended colorway from a kit, and that the yarn is Vovo by Rosa Pomar, and it's 100% wool, 50 grams is 143 meters. So it weighs um, 220 grams, so um, I guess in total about four and a half balls, but it does use uh, a few different colors and two and about two and a half balls of the dark gray and less than one ball of each of the others. Um, I've put all of the detailed, um, my you know, detailed yarn usage and weights and everything on Ravelry. Um, so the pattern gauge is 20 stitches. I knit the th uh, 33 and three quarter inch size, but mine ended up at 30 inches, so significantly smaller. So I'd say my gauge might have been about 22 stitches over four inches instead of 20, which is fine for me. That's two inches of negative ease. And I think for the style of this, because um, it's a fairly cropped top, um, I was quite happy for that to have a little bit of negative ease. Um, I did go up a needle, even, that's even going up a needle size. So I used um, a four millimeter and a 3.5 millimeter needle uh, for the ribbing and then that that is a needle size up for each and I also went up a needle size even from that on the sleeves because I was magic looping and I tend to magic loop tighter so I used a four and a half millimeter needle for the sleeves and 3.75 for the sleeve ribbing so I'll show you I did um, knit it like reasonably cropped but I did add three there's this brown here I added three, that's a three row repeat. I added three of those. Um, I just was weighing my yarn and I worked out I had enough to add three extra. So that's nine extra rows here. But I did make the ribbing shorter, so I probably didn't actually lengthen it. Um, the ribbing is about one and a half inches and the pattern says about three inches. Um, but I think I preferred it. I, I don't really like deep ribbing. So, and I, I just, I liked this brown color and I wanted a bit more of it. So I totally used almost all of that. Um, but I still have quite a bit left of the white and the pink and this um, this sort of medium grey. So yeah, I'm really happy with how it came out. I think it's really pretty. Um, so it is, so it's 30 inch bust. It's nine and a half inches from the underarm to here. I'm wearing it with some high waisted pants, um, but it sort of sits quite nicely on those. Um, yeah, oh, and it's, um, the sleeves are four inches from the underarm to the, to the end. Um, Oh, I did slightly, I did a whole sleeve with the stitch count that was for the size that I was making, which was only 56 stitches, and I just found that was too small and too tight. And I also did that on the same needle, I did the four millimeter needle. So I ripped the whole sleeve back, re-knit it, and then knit the second one as well on 4.5 millimeter needles and extra four stitches. So I, there were two stitches cast on under the arms, and you were meant to pick those up and decrease them straight away. Well, I picked them up and I also picked one up on either side, which I generally like to do anyway to close that hole up under the arms. Um, just helps if you pick up an extra one, even if you then normally decrease it straight away, even if the pattern doesn't tell you to. And I have a video on um, on picking up stitches and you know around the sleeves and, and avoiding those holes. Um, I'll put that in the description below. Um, but what I did, because I wanted those, it's a four stitch repeat for the sleeves. I wanted to keep those four extra stitches. So I just picked up the two front under the arms, the two extras, so that gave me 60. And then I just continued on 60. I didn't do any other sleeve decreases or waist decreases. It's just, it is just straight down. Um, yeah, I, I really, oh, and I did tubular, I should say. I did a tubular bind off um, with the, for all of the, actually that was a tubular cast on, but a tubular bind off for the hems. Um, yeah, so I, I did use all of the brown, except just a tiny little bit, you know, I generally, well, obviously I had to make sure I could get a whole row. So I've just got enough left for like, you know, actually a whole repeat. So I think I've got maybe two grams left, which I do like to keep all of those um, leftovers just in case anything gets either pulled or, you know, like sometimes yarn can get kind of either, especially with floats, it could get yanked on something um, or, you know, heaven forbid moths. Um, just in case, you know, so it's nice to have a little bit um, of those. I was actually, because I've been doing a stash um, sorting video, actually, no, that was for my Q&A. Um, 
I had a QA and a of how do I find all my leftovers and I guess that's connected to my stash sorting video so I'll answer that question. Usually um, whenever I've had to fix something I have been able to find the yarn. I think it probably comes from not being able to throw anything out so or struggling to anyway. Um, right so I think that's Jupiter crop. I don't think I have anything else to say about it except I'm happy with it. It is a little warm even though it's overcast and looks like it's going to rain it's still quite warm so I probably will take this off uh, shortly. Um, but I'll show you my second finished object. Um, it's actually two of them here. I haven't woven in the ends yet. They're very small. Just a couple of cotton dishcloths um, using Debbie Bliss um, Cotton DK. I made one and then I weighed it and realized it was about half the ball. So that was quite exciting. Um, here's, the, here's the ball band, Debbie Bliss Pure Cotton. Um, so there's only, what is it? It's 50 grams and there's, I think, 80, 82 meters. So it's a pretty bulky cotton. I used four and a half um, millimeter needles. I didn't use a pattern or anything. It's just like seed stitch and then some broken rib and then some more seed, seed stitch. Um, and then when I was making the second one, I was kind of eyeballing it and I sort of was counting, but I, you know, wasn't able to count properly. And I realized, I think why well, I, I did count properly afterwards, it's two rows less than this one. And I wanted to make, I'll, I'll make a batch of four. So I've got four of these balls so I can make four for my daughter Mia and then I'll have two more balls left to make for for another gift for someone I just think they're nice like to have like a little bundle all the same color um, but this one I realize is two rows less than this one now I think I have this is the rest of the yarn I think I have enough to like seriously this probably doesn't matter but given that I'm gonna make two more I'd like to make them all the same so just when I put that yarn and like I, I sort of measure across the width of it it goes at least six times, so even more I think. Yeah, there's a fair bit there. So I think it goes about seven or eight times, which does mean there's enough yarn um, for two more rows. So I'll just undo the bind off. I do have to undo those few rows of seed stitch. Seed stitch, you know, it's 37 stitches, it's not a big deal. Just undo those two more rows of the broken rib back to the seed stitch. That way it will be exactly the same as this one, so they weigh 25 grams each um, and then I'll make a couple more because that's really easy portable travel knitting. Um, I probably will just, um, now that I've actually worked out exactly how many rows the first one is, I can, I'll can i know that for the rest of them so I won't make that mistake again. Um, but yeah, that's it for my finished objects. Uh, what I thought I would do now actually is Friend from the Vault and um, I thought I would actually show you a sewing Friend from the Vault. I do still have more knitted and crocheted friends, mostly knitted, but um, given that I'm actually wearing it with my Jupiter crop, I thought I'd show it. So um, you might have seen it before when I stood up. These are the Palisade Pants by Paper Cut Patterns and I don't know if you can see, this is actually probably the nicest feature. It's got this like crisscross pocket um, so it's actually too, um, yeah, I just think it's a really cute feature. It has, they have center front seams rather than side seams. So they do have pockets, but they're in the front. Um, it's got a flat front waistband, but elasticized. So that's five centimeter elastic. So it's quite a, a wide elastic. Um, so they're really comfortable because they're elastic, but they look, they sit a bit more flush at the front because they're flat at the front. It has a faux, like a faux seam fly I guess you call that um, yeah and they, they are cropped you probably are oh, I can't well that's they sort of I'm bending my knee now so they're coming up higher but they they sort of come oh I don't know I'll, I'll see if I can find a photo or get a photo that's that was very silly of me trying to show you that um, I'll put a photo of myself wearing them I usually wear them with boots um, yeah, I'm really, I, I really love them. I used um, just some linen from Spotlight, which is like our big box craft store. And I knit, I knit, I sewed the extra, extra small size, which is 88 centimeter hip. Um, was there anything else I was gonna say? Oh, oh, there is, the pattern has a shorts version as well, but I haven't made the shorts. I made these in 2020. And yeah, I was doing a lot more sewing back then, but just putting them on, I, mean, I wear a lot of my sewed, sewn, sewn items. And I love them and I do find sewing like I have that's all I can do like I, I love my multitasking I can knit and watch TV or walk or chat with friends or whatever um, but sewing I can't do anything else but sew um, I, I can't even watch a podcast or anything I just am totally focused on what I'm doing because I just don't have the experience I guess and it's a different kind of craft um, if I ever do I end up having to just you know um, get my seam ripper out, which I do anyway, but 
Yes, anyway, so that's my friend from the vault. I'll come back to showing um, uh, knitted items, but I thought I may as well show you this one. Um, you know, if there are any other sewists out there, if you enjoy sewing, I really recommend this pattern. It was very, I'm not a particularly skilled sewer, and pants can be a bit tricky with fit. So, but I don't always love elasticized waists, so just the look of them, particularly at the front. So this sort of, this front option where it sort of sits front here, like I'll just show you from the side. I think it looks, you know, like I think it looks quite like, I don't know, I don't mind the, um, the elastic at the, the waist and the back, but I prefer the front to look, to sit flat. Um, yep, okay, so that's my friend from the vault. I had to take my Jupiter crop off because it was just a little bit too hot. And I also thought I'd just show you um, the, uh, the neckline. And I had mentioned before with the short rows that I wasn't that happy with how the neckline was sitting. And I will talk a little bit more about this in just about short rows in general in what is called my eye. But I think one of the problems with the short rows is they just don't come around far enough. Um, you know, I think stylistically, Caitlin Hunter might have wanted to not have too much of like this pattern interrupted by bringing the short rows further around, but they really should be brought further around. You can see there, they don't, they sort of pretty much stop halfway at the back and that doesn't really quite do the job for short rows. You need to really raise the whole thing up, not just put a wedge in at the back. You sort of want to put extra all the way around to tilt the whole thing, the whole sweater forward so that the front comes down. Um, and but I'll talk more about that in um, what has caught my eye right so anyway that's my Jupiter crop you'll see actually that I did leave even though I've woven in that end I haven't fully woven it really well and snipped it because I am still thinking I mean I don't know you can have a look back and see what you thought I thought the neckline was actually not too bad um, but if it starts to bother me if I feel like it's a little bit too um, flary I will um, I will because it is you know that ribbing could do with being on a one's one size, one needle size down. It's just a little bit too, um, too like sort of flary a bit. Um, but so that's why I just haven't completely woven that in. I might go back and fix it if I can be bothered. All right, so I'm up to my works in progress and I don't have any new works in progress, but I do have some progress on some of my um, current whips. This first one is Pure Joy by Hohi Locatelli. And I, I'll just show you. Um, I'm knitting it out of Skein Classy in the colorway um, Mist and in the Navy. So that's kind of like a sort of an icy blue, lavender and gray, sort of gray. And then that's quite a deep navy. Um, so I've made a bit more progress. I think I'd only just got up to the first blue, um, dark blue navy section. So I've made a bit more progress. It still looks a little untidy. I haven't blocked it yet, but I actually think, you know, I think from a distance, you know, what do they call it, like a Monet, it, um, from a distance it looks nice and I think that's gonna be okay. I will block it just out of interest. I don't think I would, in fact, I'm quite sure I would not want a garment out of this. I don't know. Um, so I think it's a good plan that I've ended up using it for a shawl. Um, yeah, I'll just show you again close, but that's not blocked. See, it sort of looks a little bit, I mean, most shawls unblocked look a bit blech, but um, I might block that on the needles. I might actually do that tonight. I'll block it on the needles tonight just to make sure that I'm um, happy with it, but I think I will be. I think it's gonna be a nice shawl. It's a really, really easy, mindless pattern once you've sort of got it, um, once you've got the thing memorized, I guess. And I do, because there's a lot of short rows, I just keep a marker so that I don't have to count. Right, so that's Pure Joy by Hohi Locatelli. I am using one needle size down. I did feel like it was going to be a bit loosey-goosey, so I'm knitting it on a 3.75 millimeter needle. And actually that's been on the needles for 10 days. And I forgot to mention that Jupiter Crop was on the needles for 32 days. So right around a month, um, which I thought was not too bad for a, um, you know, especially given I'm making other things as well. And the cotton washcloths, I don't know, a couple of days. Like, you know, I, I can't even remember. Um, you know, you sort of finish one, start the next one. So I probably won't bother with, you know, how long that was on the needles. It's such a small project. Uh, right, my next work in progress. I do have three uh, garments still um, after finishing Jupiter Crop. So it's probably a good thing I didn't cast anything new on. Now, I don't think I've made any progress on this, but I'll just quickly show you. This is the Shaw Tea 
uh, by, maybe I've just done a couple of the rows, Shorty by Anne Vensel, and I'm knitting it out of um, Isia Trio 2 and Alpaca 1. In the, they're the recommended, that's the recommended yarn and the colours that Anne has used in her sample. And yeah, I really like how it's looking um, with that, um, that shoulder detail. So I've finished the front section and I'm now working the back section. And the back is like, I think I've got another 60 rows of back and forth. And it is definitely a little bit hard on my hands. I'll just pop it on. I think it might have been better with this ribbing on a one needle size smaller, but I think it's going to be okay because I think it will actually stretch out a little bit. So um, the back is going to be longer, so I guess that's going to, that will sit down. The back has more rows and then um, it's got about 60 rows. I haven't blocked it yet. Um, that might be a good idea before I join. So I've got about 60 rows to go, then I'll join these two and then start working down in the round, which will be nice not to be doing so much purling. Um, so what am I doing? I'm using this, I'm knitting the 37 inch size, but I think mine is going to be smaller because even though I went up a needle size, it's meant to be knit on three millimeter needles, but I'm using 3.25. Um, but I think, I think I've st I'm still like got a, a, a tighter gauge. So the gauge on the pattern is 21 stitches. I reckon I'm at least 22, 23. That's been on the needles for 19 days. Um, yes, but I'm hoping that that's going to, now that I've finished Jupiter Crop, that's gonna start, all of my other things are gonna start getting a bit more work. Um, because I am working on the, um, the, that the front's finished for a while and I'm working on the back, I have just put these, um, cause this is actually quite slippery on these, like I have actually had these, this slide off the needles and I've oh, had to, you know, and I'm not even working on it, but while I was working on this, it slid off these needles. So I've got these um, stoppers from Twice Sheared Sheep. And there are lots of different stoppers that you can get, but these ones actually are so good because they have like a little hinge. So they don't, like it, you put them on and then the hinge closes and it, um, you know, grips the needle. So they don't like that. I'd really struggle to, to get that off. Um, so it's not just going to get knocked off in the bag. Whereas other needle stoppers I find just, they just fall off. Um, yeah, so... That's my short tea and I really like I'm really looking forward to having this so I would like to um to get going on this one. I'm not sure whether it will be good in summer. I think it will certainly be good for spring. So if I can hurry up and get it knit, I can wear it um to work for spring. Although we do have air conditioning at work, so you know, it probably could work uh, year round. Uh, that's the short tea and my um, next work in progress is the Selwood tea, another one by Caitlin Hunter. This is a bottom-up pattern. I don't do a lot of bottom-ups. Um, it is, I'm, it's a sport weight um, pattern. I'm using Orange Flower MCS, which is Merino Cashmere Silk Sport. And did I say the short tea has been on the, yes I did, on the needles for 19 days. The Selwood tea has been on the needles for 17 days. I'm knitting the smallest size here, the 35 and two, 35 and a quarter inch bust. And I went down a needle size to a 3.75 instead of a four millimeter, because I just like this kind of yarn on that size needles. I think that's actually gonna be plenty fine, because and even though when I, I did block it after I'd done nine repeats, and um, it sort of blocked to about 30 inches, but like I, it's got so much stretch with the lace and everything. Um, so I've done two, you probably can't tell, but I've done two more repeats. So I've done 11 repeats. It's only a four row repeat, so I've only done eight rounds. It sounds a bit more. I've got markers separating each section, which that has been really important to keep me on track. One thing though, that is like there's, there's enough in this pattern that is similar that you can go a bit on autopilot, but then there's these subtle differences that because you're on autopilot, you've missed it. So I did end up having to go, I missed which was my start of round and I started doing the knit four togethers half around too early because my side markers I don't know I'd switched that I'd dropped one off and I switched it and I just found another marker and I forgot which one was the start of round and I wasn't paying attention so and that's the most painful round the knit four togethers but because I'd started half around too early and then did a couple more rounds I had to like go all the way back so that wasn't pleasant um, so what I've done and the other thing is you have these slip stitches down the, down the side. So you s slip those stitches 
every other row. So that creates that sort of decorative look here. Um, and it's a four row repeat, so you, or four round repeat or whatever, I'm knitting in the round. Um, you, do, you slip them on the row that you do the knit four together and then you slip them out of the other three rows, the one in the middle, right? So knit it, then slip it, then knit it, then you're up to the knit four together. But it's pretty easy to like lose track of, am, am I slipping those? Like I know when I'm doing a knit four together, I'm slipping them, but out of the other three, am I on a slip or am I not? So I grabbed one of these stitch markers. That, it's another one from um, Twice Sheared Sheep that we have, um, it's got like knit and decrease. It's just got two loops. So these are meant to be for either decrease or increase. So you like knit, knit this round, decrease this round and you switch. So I'm obviously not decreasing or increasing, but I thought I could use this one so that if it's on the thing with the K that I'm knitting, if it's on the D, it's not decreasing, it's slipping, but it's just not knitting. Anyway, I think you understand what I mean. Just moving that and also that's one unique marker. So I know that's my beginning of round. It is really important when everything looks the same to have a unique beginning of round marker. Um, yeah, but it's like, that was really annoying to have to come back like two and a half rows, especially with the knit four togethers. But I think it's looking really pretty and it's gonna make a really lovely top. It's quite holy, so I'd have to wear a camisole or something underneath it. Um, but, so it, it will be more, it won't be like a full summer top. It would be more like a spring or autumn top. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be quite lovely. And was there anything else I was gonna say? No, I think that's it. Um, yes, I will mention, because I've mentioned two twice sheared sheet products that I've just been using. I am, um, what do you call it, like an ambassador for them. So I have um, an affiliate link. Uh, so if you wanted to buy anything from them, you can go through my link and it costs the same to you, but I get a small percentage of the, um, of anything that you, like of the cost of anything you purchase. So yes, so if you're going to anyway, if you wouldn't mind using my link, that would be really lovely. Um, and I do, I, I use their stuff and I really like it. So um, yeah, just thought I'd mention that. Uh, the other thing, my last garment that's on the needles has not actually had any um, any progress on it, to be honest. Um, and I, f I almost forgot that I'm knitting it, which is really sad. Um, it's such a lovely sweater, the Fiola by Isabel Kramer. I think I just got caught up with the color work. You know when you get into like a groove of something that you're excited about? I was really enjoying my color work. Um, so this is Fiola by Isabel Kramer. I won't put it on again because I already had it on last week and it's like I've done maybe two rounds on there. So it's really lovely sleeve detail. Um, and I've just, I have started putting, because it's a six row repeat, I've started putting a marker on here and then just moving it up. I've obviously been a bit slack. I haven't moved it up for a bit, but so I think I'm up to row two maybe now. Like I move it up so I just count above it as to what row I am on just to keep me on track um yeah but really lovely where's the yarn this is um uh mayak baby yak lace held double in the colorway oatmeal i think and i'm using one needle size up because i was my gauge was quite tight i was getting it's a 21 stitch gauge pattern on 3.75 millimeter needles on those needles i got 21 stitches I think I got close to 22 stitches on the four millimeter needles blocked, so it might be a tiny bit smaller. I'm knitting the 35 and three quarter inch size. I'm thinking it will end up being about 34 inches, but we'll see. Um, yes, so, and then I think I'm almost done with my works in progress. I've got one more to show you. Like I don't really count those, um, well I can count those washcloths. I will do a couple more, but I don't have one on the needles at the moment. Um, my last work in progress is the Skimmer Socks by um, Sheila Toy Stromberg and did I tell you Fiola has been on the needles for 44 days that's a month and a half so it's getting up there I think it's time for me to make a bit of um, progress on that so these are the um, skimmer socks I used um, Madeline Tosh sock in the colorway Earl Grey and so I finished one sock I use a 2.25 millimeter needle for the body and a 2 millimeter needle for the ribbing um, which is totally fine on, this is the ones in um, Knit with Sanders Gun Sunday in 4008. I knit this, so I've only finished one of this, but I wanted to show you these two together because I weighed this one. This one weighs 22.6 grams and this one is 14.7 and they are pretty much the same size, right? They are 
So it's just, but this is such a much denser, thicker, well, it's denser because I've knit it on the same needles, but like, so, but it's a much thicker, let me grab the yarn. That's the yarn. It's quite a plump fingering and it definitely has a lot more, um, it's a lot more weight for the same number of meters. So I've just started the second one now and I realized I only just had enough, like I've got 23 grams here, so it must've been a 45 gram ball. Whereas these two socks weigh less than 30 grams. So when I've you know, said before, if you've got 34 grams for a pair of skimmer socks, you should be fine. It really depends on the, like, you know, the yardage per gram for the socks that you're for the yarn that you're using so this is probably as heavy as I can imagine it would be 45 grams um, and so I'll, I will just have enough they do fit the same though although this one is probably um, I probably needed to see can you see how that's quite loosey-goosey I think I need to you need to knit your bind off quite tight I think I'm gonna actually have to um, redo that bind off because that's see how that's a bit more inflexible whereas that's like quite flexible um, I don't know you probably can't tell but this one was feeling a bit loose on my feet not because the socks were bigger but just because that bind off was a bit so uh, I don't really want to have to do it but because it, it is a bit hard on my hands it's because it's such a thick yarn on a two millimeter needle um, I might even have to go down to a 1.75 for the bind off just to make sure it stays on okay um, anyway, so I finished that first one and the second one um, has been cast on and I'm actually um, I really want to finish these because I've got a, a bunch of um, leftover uh, Stripey sock yarn that I would like to start because I think I prefer These socks out of stripey sock yarn. They're just a bit more fun um, Right, I think yeah, that's it for my works in progress so I'm up to my acquisitions and plans, and uh, I ordered this a while ago um, from Needles and Wool, but it arrived this week because I ordered it when they were on holidays. So I got a bit of a discount because they said they weren't gonna ship it for a while while they were on holidays. So I'm really excited about this. This is Cardiff Cashmere Classic in Nero, which is a black color, and I got seven balls of this, and I'm going to make the Poppy Tea by Petite Knit. Now I've already made that pattern before using, um, actually using the yarn the Sanders Garden Sunday, this one, and the Tin Silk Mohair. So I've made a red version, but the pattern was actually um, like the des in the in the pattern photos, and the pattern was written and designed using the Cardiff uh, Classic Cashmere Ca Cardiff Cashmere Classic. <laughs> Say that fast. Um, in the color colorway MA, which is like the really bright red that I was sort of going after with this. But I think I'd, it will make a really lovely black top. And I really like my Woolen Berries by Hohe Locatelli that I made using this yarn. It's really beautifully soft and it was on sale. So, and um, yeah, I just think the poppy tea will be a really good one. So I'm going to use that. I, um, and I also, in that order, I got some drop silk mohair that was, um, that was already on sale there. So I got this for Instant Crush, and so I've got the colours, where have I? I've got three balls of, this one's rust, I think. Three balls of rust, um, two balls of, what's that one? That's rust, um, ch cherry sorbet, two balls of, uh, what's this one? Oh, I have to think. This one is, oh, pearl, um, pink pearl, and then two balls of caramel. So I think that will make a really pretty um, instant crush. And I was thinking about the Cocoon Cardigan um, by Ann Vensel, but I was a bit nervous about ordering the amount that was needed sight unseen and unswatched. So I thought I've just grabbed in that same order, I thought I'll grab a couple more colors. This is light lavender and this is light pink. And I plan to use that, um, or at least try it out with my, um, so many ums. What's that? Neuterden yarn. So I've got some a really nice pink Neuterden yarn that I thought might be nice for cocoon. So and I would hold it with one of those, but I want to swatch with that. And then um, I can use like a single ball for like an Oslo hat or whatever, because there's 210 meters for each of these. So yeah, I'm really excited to have the yarn for Instant Crush. Um, not sure when it will get on the needles, but uh, they had it on sale at Needles and Wool. So I thought, well, I'll get it while I'm getting the um, the Cardiff Clash. Cardiff, 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 Cardi
Okay, I'm not even gonna, that's embarrassing. Okay, I won't edit that out. I think that, anyway. <laughs> um, right, I think that's it. Oh, yeah, I think that's it for my acquisitions. They, oh, no, there's not. There's one other thing. I won't show it, but I got a new microphone. So I've been using my daughter's microphone after I was having a lot of trouble with the microphone for my camera. And it's probably better that I use a, a decent microphone anyway. But I'm going to have to give this back to her at some point. So um, I bought a new microphone. I'm still using hers today. So, because I, I just want to do like a little small video with it to make sure everything works okay and I've got all the settings right and everything. Um, but yeah, that was quite exciting. I am so, I've mentioned in last week's podcast quite a ditherer about when I get overwhelmed with choice and that definitely stopped me from buying a microphone for a long time because I was like, but which is the right one? Um, and then I was like, you know what? I got the road and I figured like enough people use it, it's got to be all right. So um, I'm sure I'll be fine. Anyway, uh, so Yes, I'll, I might try it out. Um, I'm going to try it out when I'm on holidays, but I'll get to that later. So up to um, other plans. Aside from the plans with the Instant Crush and the Poppy Tea, in terms of more upcoming plans, because I am going away, I thought I'd mention, um, I had this yarn marked for the Peacock Tea. It's been sitting there for a while, and I do want to make it, but I actually have six skeins of this, which is like about three times what I need, maybe not three times, twice what I need for the Peacock Tea. So I actually thought this might make a nice Audrey top. I made a black Audrey top that I actually wear quite a lot. And so because I have six skeins, I've got plenty for two. And they're two very different tops. They would occupy very different places in my wardrobe. So yeah, I thought maybe an Audrey top out of that red. Um, and I might actually even um, cast that on soon because if I, um, because I am going away, I'm going on holidays two weeks um, to Bali that might be a really nice um, project that if, if I finish it there, I might even be able to wear it. So um, yeah, because it's a very, it's a sleeveless tank, you know, lots of, um, lots of air. Uh, yeah, is there anything else? I think that's, I think that's it in terms of upcoming plans. Um, I think I, rather than any new things I want to cast on, I'd like to make some significant progress on the, you know, like fiola has been on the needles for, you know, over six weeks. I'd really like to, um, get that one I mean I'm not going to be able to wear it anytime soon but I don't want to I actually like to get things finished I, I definitely am not one of those people who hibernate until the next season I mean I just think it would just not come back out so I have to finish it even if then it comes out as a finished garment the next season but I, I wouldn't want to I think I would just not want to I wouldn't want to play with it anymore it'd be like no no I'm new and shiny so I've got to make sure I finish that uh yep so that's it for my upcoming plans. One thing I've been wanting to improve on is my crochet skills. Now I learned how to crochet as a child and I've crocheted quite a number of items over the years, but I don't really have a good knowledge of the terminology and I don't really know how to read a pattern. And I'd really like to work on my understanding of crochet. So that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. So I've started watching some crochet classes on Skillshare and I began with a class with Tony Lipsy called Five Crochet Hacks Every Beginner Should Know and that was a great class. It had some tips on turning chains and foundation chains and also like how to join a new yarn and there was even a class there on the Magic Ring which is like a crochet version of the pinhole cast on. So yeah there was so much there and I found it really interesting with lots of good tips. As I started exploring the platform, I noticed they had these learning paths, which is a curated sequence of classes that helps you build your knowledge and skills in a logical order. And I saw that there was one on crochet called Take Your Crochet to the Next Level. So I thought I might try that in the summer holidays. But I think my next class is going to be the four core crochet stitches, because I'd like to clarify my knowledge of the terminology and just to have a better understanding of the feature of each stitch and like what, what each one is used for. Skillshare also have sewing classes and classes on video editing and photography and cooking and baking. So there's a lot there that interests me and I'm really looking forward to checking them out. And that's why I'm so excited to partner with Skillshare. The first 500 people to join Skillshare using the link below in the description will receive one month premium access free to be able to explore the platform, try out some classes and to see if Skillshare is right for you. So thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So on the theme of improving my crochet, I thought I'd just quickly show you my um, from my hidden basket of whips, this crochet was meant to be a basket. 
that um, I think I'm going to, well, I know I'm going to undo because I've been crocheting this on a 10 millimeter hook and that's just two, I'm using this um, yarn that I sort of wound up in a ball that's Rowan All Seasons cotton and it's three strands, which is an Aran weight cotton, but even three strands um, Aran weight cotton on a 10 millimeter needle is not sturdy enough to stay up. And the other thing is it's not gonna felt, right? So this is not, this is machine washable, it's not feltable. Now I have, cause felting can do a lot for, like I've, I actually just thought I'd show you these couple of little, um, this is like more like a little tray than a basket that um, that I felted, that, that worked really, really well. When it's 100% um, wool and it's not machine washable, it felts really, really nicely. And I use that sort of just to have like, um, either just dump project bags or things in. And then this one here, um, another one that I use, I might have shown these before, sorry if you've already seen them, um, but I use, I chuck my needles when I've, um, they do have another place to live, but this is their sort of landing spot after I'm finished with them, but haven't sort of collected enough to put them all the way. Um, so if it was, if this was feltable, I could um, have chucked it in the washing machine, but it's not. So I'm, um, I'm committed to ripping this out um, or ripping it back to, I'll rip it back to the turning point and then I'm going to try with a six millimeter hook and I'll try the single crochet again because I think that is a pretty dense stitch. Somebody mentioned just um, wrapping the yarn from the other direction like instead of under wrapping it over so I might try that. I'll try with regular first and then see if just going down a hook does much but I won't do too much I'll just do a couple of rounds. Um, yes anyway I'm I do want to, I do want to fix this, um, like, or at least make something usable out of it, if possible. I'd rather not rip the whole thing out. Um, if not, I suppose I could turn it into a bag rather than a basket, because it definitely, like, it'd make a nice bag, but it'd be so heavy, even with nothing in it. That's the only problem I have with that, but mm, it's not too bad, but still, it feels like it would be, it's heavy with nothing in it, and I, I don't like carrying heavy bags. All right, so that's it for my hidden basket of whips. I haven't done that yet, but I, I will rip that back. And I hope by the time I record next time, I've made some progress and um, yes, crochet is improving. So my next segment is what has caught my eye. And one thing that's caught my eye, actually my friend Beck recommended it to me, is the sea glass hat pattern by Wool and Pine. It's actually a free pattern if you sign up for their newsletter. So they have a, um, I've seen before their sea glass um, sweater and cardigan, but this is like a hat pattern and I guess it's kind of an idea of maybe you could try this first or use more of your leftovers if you made, a, made the sweater and you still had more. And you use a different color every round. So because of that, you can imagine you'd have just a crazy amount of ends. So they recommend using the magic knot and potentially even using a little dot of fray check. So I've never really used the magic knot. I just don't like using knots in my knitting and I don't have, I don't usually use so many leftovers or something with that much yarn that that would be necessary. I just weave in the ends. But for this particular pattern, because you're changing a color every single round, you would just, you'd have a really bulky section of all of those ends. So not only would it be time consuming, which is you know bad enough, but it actually wouldn't look great in that section. So um, I thought I'm curious about it. Uh, I obviously have a lot of leftovers, so and that would be a good idea to sort of try the technique, try the magic knot, and with the fray check and see if I think that um, it works well enough and doesn't come undone. Because I wouldn't want to be doing this in a hat pattern and, or in a jumper and then it all falls apart. Um, but yeah, to just try it for the hat and see if I like it. So yeah, I just, I'm not really inspired by, oh, I just find, I feel a bit, that almost overwhelms me a little bit, the thought of a different color every round. But I guess if you just, I also think, well, you'd have to be doing that at home. That wouldn't be very portable. Um, just all of the different balls and, um, the magic knot and the fray check and the, anyway, it's something to think about, but it does feel like that's something that I'd have to be at home with all my yarn around me. And it would take a lot of, like I couldn't be watching a show while doing that, like magic knotting and fray checking and picking the next color. And so that would be like a, this is what I'm doing and nothing else kind of thing. But it looks really, it does look really pretty. The other one that's kind of a good leftovers hat pattern, not maybe so many leftovers, is the Harlow hat by Andrea Maori. 
Now, oh, I should grab my, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna go grab it. I don't think I've shown this before. This is my knitted friend from the vault then, seeing I only showed, um, I only showed sewing today. So this is the Harlow hat by Andrea Mowry. It was my first brioche. If I've already shown this before, if you've seen this, um, I'm sorry, um, you're seeing it again. I love two color brioche. This was actually, it's, I think it's easier than single color brioche because you can tell which one's which. Um, it's meant to be a bit slouchy, but I, I didn't do it slouchy, but I think if I was gonna make it again, I would make it longer, but not slouchy, but to fold up the brim, particularly because like each side is so cute in its own way, like it's really sweet. So I think I used some leftover stripy sock yarn and I don't even know if it was stripy, but it ended up striping for that length of repeat and um, some other leftover yarn from uh, the balloon sweater, I think, hedgehog fibers. Anyway, the point about this is um, that I wanted to show you is that this used 23 grams of each of fingering weight. So, and it's a really, if you've never done brioche, it is actually a really good, um, I'm just gonna show you, I'll put it on. Um, I think it's really quite sweet. I don't know where the end is, that looks like the start of round. But if I made it a bit longer, you could then like, obviously it looks silly now, but like if, you, if I made it longer, I need more yarn obviously, but um, like maybe 30 grams or something, um, which I think is what you're meant to have for the pattern because like if either it's slouchy or I suppose you could fold it up. But how cute would that be? Anyway, let me just, like you sort of, because you can see both, Mm, not sure. Maybe it would look better that way. Um, anyway, I guess it's reversible. Um, yeah, so that's the Harlow um, hat by Andrea Mary. Really good first brioche project. And yeah, it doesn't use much yarn. You could, if you just want it like a, like a beanie style, you could get away with like 23, 23, 24 grams. But again, just like I was mentioning with the skimmer socks, don't quote me on it. It depends on the weight of the yarn. This is pretty reasonably light fingering weight yarn. Right, um, the other thing that I wanna mention for, um, it's a few sort of other things that are not necessarily knitting related. One is that, one just is about, um, I, I think I might've got an email about it. It was a craft cinema night at the movies. I thought that was such a really good idea. So there's one at the Randwick, so this is only really if you're in Sydney, there's one at the Randwick Ritz on the 17th of October and they, um, you can bring your crochet or your knitting and they dim the lighting and it's a two, there's two movies, Clueless and She's the Man. Now, I don't think um, I would go to this particular one because um, I'm not that into, I've already seen Clueless and although many years ago. Um, but yeah, it sounds kind of interesting. I, I think I'm back from Bali then. But anyway, it just sounds quite cool. I like the concept. Maybe in your area, they might be doing something like that and it also means you might get to meet other knitters and um, crocheters in person. So I just thought I'd mention that and Another thing that has caught my eye, um, I mentioned, I don't know if it was last week, but I went, or oh, maybe a few weeks ago, about seeing a lady at a cafe with a commercial vest and wanting to make something like it for my friend Amy. So um, I went to the cafe just last week, last weekend, and the same girl was there and she was wearing the same vest. So I asked if she didn't mind if I took a photo of it. So I'll just put a couple of photos of that vest up there. And I wanna have a bit of a look in Ravelry for something that is quite similar because I'd like to make something like that um, for my friend Amy. I like, quite like the idea of making a jumper for someone where I actually know that they, they like that style and they would wear it. The last thing that has caught my, so yeah, if you actually know anything that looks like that um, pattern on Ravelry or you think might um, match that kind of split side with the ties, um, yeah, I'd love to hear it. The last thing that I wanted to mention in what has caught my eye is um, just about the short rows. So last week I talked about a pattern that had caught my eye that was in testing by Kadri and it had like a bit of a hump here and I talked about the Paloma sweater and Turtle Dove 1 and 2. Now they were both by Espas Tricot and that I, I went to look at on Ravelry because I, I started the Paloma sweater. No, I started Turtle. I think I might have even started Paloma but it didn't even make it to a project page. I definitely started Turtle Dove and knit quite a lot of it and then frogged it. I was really worried about the hump. And at that stage when I was making it, I wasn't as familiar with like short rows and placement and everything. And I was a bit worried about all of the photos with this hump here. And I went to Ravelry and I was like, I noticed that these patterns weren't in my library. And I was like, but I know I have them. And I think they were free patterns back 
when I downloaded them. So I do apologize if I, I can't remember if I said they were free. They were free, but they're not anymore. But when I, because I do already, I'd already downloaded them when they were free and so they're on my computer. And so I took a look at Turtle Dove, maybe it was all Paloma. And the short rows don't even go all the way, at least in Paloma, they don't even go all the way across the back. So if you happen to be knitting Paloma or Turtle Dove, there's just no way that short rows just on the back are going to do the job. You like you need to actually, um, they, it needs to come around over the shoulders. So I did watch, a number of people mentioned um, Laura Penrose's podcast. So I watched hers on a sweater that she was designing, a colorwork sweater, and that was really interesting. She talked um, a little bit about shoulder slope and, or at least, uh, I don't know if it was shoulder slope or broad shoulders or whatever compared to your bust and maybe knitting the wrong size. Um, so that was kind of interesting, but it sort of seemed like she was trying to figure it out. Like it wasn't something that she was on authority on. She was talking to her tech editor about it. And then another viewer, Kerry, um, shared with me a podcast on short rows that was put out by Megan, who's the unapologetic knitter, and she is a tech editor. And that was really interesting. She had like a, a piece of um, paper that she had put over a, um, a dress form and was sort of moving it to get the idea of what short rows can do. And that was really, really interesting. So I'm going to link to that. So I think that to some degree, shoulder slope does have something to do with how deep your short rows can be. Um, just adding more short rows isn't necessarily going to do the job for your neckline. The But even still, you you do have to come around. You can't just have it as a wedge in the back or you're just going to have this bump of fabric at the back. So, and I think perhaps the bump of the fabric in the front, maybe that also relates to them not coming around far enough. I'm not, sh I'm not entirely sure, but it was a really interesting podcast that Megan put out and I'd highly recommend going. If you're, if you're interested in that, particularly if you want to add short rows to a garment, um, I would take a look at it. I also think... The, she mentioned the so faded pullover which is one that I have made a few times and that is a great one where it's like actually you don't have to cast on in a circle to start with and then work down and have to deal with short rows you can actually and a lot of patterns do so faded is just one example a lot of patterns do start in the round to get that shaping to get the extra rows in the back and then join in the round and then you pick up the stitches later now I actually think and perhaps the other patterns with the short rows are just there to avoid people having to pick up stitches if they don't like picking up stitches or they don't feel confident picking up stitches. And here's a way you don't have to, um, just like knitting toe-up socks, you don't have to, if you you don't ever have to do kitchener stitch. Um, but doing that just to avoid kitchener stitch doesn't sort of seem to make sense to me. Just learn how to do kitchener stitch. Um, well, I mean, I say that, but like it can be a bit tricky, but you know, it's all right to, these are skills that are worth learning. And so maybe with sweaters, like I'm not opposed to, if you really want a neckline further down, why not just design one with, that actually is back and, or back, so I should say, sort of back and forth and then pick up, and then you have to pick up the stitches for the neckline. I don't love doing it. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, but if it's gonna get a better result than starting in the round and short rows, um, anyway, but mostly I like to just knit a pattern as it is. I prefer not to have to add stuff or change stuff. So I guess it all comes down to the designer and I'm not going to be designing patterns. So anyway, that's enough on the short rows. Um, I will link to, I'll link to Laura Penrose's, um, podcast, the particular one for her with where she talks about her, um, adding short rows and Megan's one as well. Right. I've talked a lot. Um, that is it for what has caught my eye. So my last little segment is just my personal stuff. So if you are leaving me now, um, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to be off in Bali on, I guess it's kind of personal stuff, but just so you know, um, I'm leaving in Bali for Bali in two days. So I'll be away for two weeks. I plan to, I've been um, creating some content on my stash video and I've also done a QA and a um, video, but I haven't edited those. So I'm hoping to get them edited before I go. Um, if not, I have to rely on, I'll edit it while I'm away and rely on the Wi-Fi in Bali. So if I can get it done and uploaded, then I'll be able to release them on the two Wednesdays while I'm away. And then I'll be back to a normal podcast in three weeks. It's my, um, 
I, like I uploaded on Thursday morning. Um, so if, like, but I think for, if you're in America or the UK, it'll come out on Wednesday night, my usual podcast anyway. Um, right. So that's, that's that leading into my personal stuff though. Um, so yes, if you're leaving now, thanks. I'll see you in three weeks. Um, but do look out for those, the stash video and the Q and A video. Onto personal stuff, um, it was my son's 17th birthday last Wednesday. Um, I already mentioned that we went out for breakfast, but we went out for Chinese for dinner. That was really nice. Um, I really like going to Chinese for dinner because like they, they actually bring like the, the Mongolian lamb at, to the table where it's all sizzling and the crispy things that are meant to be crispy are crispy. They're just not good um, doing takeout. So that was, and it's always like, there's usually a crowd of us, so you get to try a bit of everything. Um, and then other than that, it's just been getting like the last week of school busy with marking and I went for obviously a walk with my friend on the weekend. Um, I did have a pedicure with my daughter Alex this morning, just getting ready to, to go away and I caught up with my friend Gloria for lunch. So I've had a nice day today. That's why it's getting a bit, um, it's quite late now. It's actually, um, 4.30 in the afternoon, so it's getting a little bit dark. So... I need to sign off now, so I've got I've got still got some marking to do. I need to pack. Um, I don't know if it would be interesting for people to see me pack. Um, like it'd probably be a very short video because I just chuck it in last minute. I am very much a last minute packer, but I think perhaps the the bit about what knitting I'm going to take might be might be interesting. I don't know. You can put mention in the comments if you think that it, there's anything interesting in that. Seeing what I pack. Um, for a two-week holiday in the sun. I'm definitely not going to pack, like I'm not going to take the cashmere or the mohair to Bali. There's no way. It's hot and humid. Um, so I do have to make some decisions about what, like whether even fiola, as much as I wanted to knit it, like is that a mistake? Is that a silly thing? It's, it's light. It's not big and bulky. Um, yeah, so whether that's just a I'm not doing a lot of moving around. We're only staying in two different places. So... You know, it's, and most of my packing will be, you know, shorts and swimmers. It's not like I've got, you know, big ski jackets and things. So I'll, I should have plenty of room in my luggage. Um, yes, and I'm always going to overpack with knitting. So, yep. But anyway, I better, I better sign off and get going on that. Um, thank you so much for watching. It's just, it's such a pleasure doing this. It's going to be weird having a couple of weeks off. Um, but yes, I've got a few things to do before I, um, I can even start thinking about the holiday yet. So, uh, right. Hope everyone's enjoying their knitting and I'll see you soon.